All right, this is the notes for section 12, 1, parabolas. If you haven't done so already, make sure you read the section before continuing on with these notes. Um, we've looked at parabolas before, uh, but when we looked at them before, we, we really looked at them strictly algebraically. What I'd like to do to begin with today is take a look at how we initially talk about parabolas, and that's really through geometry. Uh, we're going to look at parabolas as a set of points in a plane and then kind of try and link that to the algebraic definition of a parabola as well. So let's look at it from a geometric perspective. It just says the definition of a parabola. It says let L be a line and F be a point not on line L. Okay, so looking at that, that the start of that definition, I have this line L. Eventually, we're going to be calling that line a directrix. And I have another point that's not on the line. So I've got my starting uh, position for defining a parabola here. OK, the next part of the definition then says, a parabola is the set of all points in a plane of L and F equidistance from L and F. So the distance from any point that's on my parabola has to be the same distance from the directrix L as it is from the focus point F. So let's let's take a little closer look at what I have set up here on the calculator. I've got this point P that's on my parabola or I'm going to establish that it's on a parabola here in just a second. The distance from that point to the directrix and that point to the focus point is the same. You'll notice that in this case they're both at 5.73. What I want to do is I want to get all points in the entire plane that fit that criteria. In other words, every point that is exactly the same distance from the focus point as it is from the directrix. All right, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace my point P as I move this point. So I'm going to move this point, and I want it to trace that point P as I'm doing the movement. Okay, so let's take a look at that. All right, so let's take a look at trying that trace again here. I'm going to do a geometry trace on this point. So as I move this point, you'll notice that my point P is being traced. Now, I want you to kind of concentrate not just on the fact that it is creating a parabola, but also that those distances, those distances up here, aren't changing. They're always the same. No matter where I move that this point, okay, no matter where P moves, those distances remain the same. So the distance from the directrix to the point and the focus to the point is exactly the same, which is exactly what our definition of a parabola states. All right, so let's use this picture over here to kind of help us describe some of the parts of a parabola. So uh, we have, first of all, uh, we say F is the focus point. So we need two things to describe a parabola, a focus point okay, and a line, which we call its directrix. So the focus point is F, this point right here. And the directrix would be this line. Okay, So that those two things are, are what the points on the parabola are going to be equidistance from. Okay, So a focus point and a directrix. Now out of that comes an axis of symmetry. Okay, And an axis of symmetry is the line through the focus that is also perpendicular to the directrix. So if I, if I draw a line through the focus point that's perpendicular to this directrix, we call that the axis of symmetry. In other words, everything on either side of it, if I were to if I were to uh, reflect the parabola over that um, that line of that axis of symmetry, it would reflect onto itself. Okay, the vertex point would be the midpoint between the focus and the directrix. Okay, and it's either if we if we think about our parabola, it's either the the uh, maximum or minimum point of that parabola, depending on if it opens up or down. Okay. So those are some different parts of parabolas that, that come up when we look at this geometric definition. 
All right, since we we are defining a parabola based on a point, its focus, and a line, its directrix, we can also write an equation for a parabola if we know those two things. If we know a coordinate for the point and we know an equation for the line, that should be enough information using the distance formula. It's really key that we understand it's the distance formula that we're using um, to help us write an equation for that parabola. Before you go on, go on, you might want to just reread example one or just take a look at that again before I go through this example one here on your notes. So let's take a look at example one here. Uh, it says, what is an equation for a parabola with a focus of 0, 1 and a directrix of y equals negative 1? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distance formula uh, to to go ahead and do this. It, what you might want to do is just pause the video right now, uh, write this down, and then then I'll talk through it um, once you, you start the video up again. Okay, so using the distance formula, and remember the distance formula just states that the distance is equal to the difference between my x values squared plus the difference between my y values squared. Okay. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm taking the difference between my x values as it relates to the focus. So the first the left hand side I'm looking at the distance from the point to the focus. So x and, and, and when I'm talking about a point, I'm just taking any point in general, that point is the point x, y. So I'm taking x minus zero squared plus y minus one squared is equal to y minus a negative 1 squared, taking the square root of that. Well, that, this, this right-hand side, is the distance from the point x, y to the directrix. And what's unique about the distance to the directrix is that the, the, um, the x values on the directrix have to remain the same. So if, if I'm measuring that distance um, to that from a point on the parabola to the directrix. I'm always measuring it vertically, therefore the x values have to be the same. So I really only need to do is find the difference between my y values. So that's why I only have this on this side. Okay. Next thing I'm doing is I'm taking, the rest of this is just straight algebra. I'm squaring both sides, get rid of those square roots, get rid of radicals, we don't like to have those there. Okay. Now I'm going to expand this out. x minus 0 squared is just x squared. Now I've got to expand out y minus 1 squared. So I, I've done that down here. And then the same thing here, y plus 1 squared. I expand that out and get this. Now what's really nice, and this happens, is that y squared and y squared will cancel out. There's one on each side. There's a positive 1 and a positive 1 on each side. So all of this stuff can cancel out. So on the right hand side I'm left with just 2y and on the left hand side I'm left with x squared minus 2y. And now if I bring the 2y over to the other side I'm left with x squared equals 4y and then if I divide by 4 on both sides I'm left with y equals x squared over 4 or y equals 1 fourth x squared which is the equation for my parabola. Okay, out of that first example kind of comes the focus and directrix of a parabola theorem. And it says the following, for any non-zero real number a, the graph of y equals ax squared. Now think about that graph, the graph of y equals ax squared. That's, that's that kind of that most basic level graph that we have there. Okay, so y equals ax squared that most basic level graph. We haven't shifted it at all. If you can remember back to when we were translating parabolas, this is a parabola that hasn't been translated at all. If that's the case, the focus will always be at the point 0, 1 over 4a. So in other words, if I know what a is of my parabola, I can find the focus point, and I can also use it to find the directrix. Okay, so in other words, if, if I have a parabola that hasn't been shifted at all, all I need to know what A is, and if I know what A is, then I can find the focus and directrix. Okay, now if I translate my parabola, 
Okay, so if I do a translation of HK, remember that means that that now my vertex point of my parabola is at the point HK. Thinking back to chapter six when we were first doing parabolas, we found that HK would be the the vertex of that parabola. So in that case, basically I've just translated it to get this, which was our vertex form for parabolas. Okay, therefore the focus just shifts as well. So instead of being at zero, it's going to be H. And instead of being at 1 over 4a, it's going to be at k plus 1 over 4a. And instead of the directrix being at y equals negative 1 over 4a, it's going to be at y equals k minus 1 over 4a. So basically, both the um, focus and directrix shift based on the translation that occurred. Okay, I'm re replacing my x value with h and replacing y with k. All right, so let's take a look at example two here. It says find the vertex, focus, and directrix of a parabola y minus one equals negative three times x plus three quantity squared. All right, so let's start with the vertex point. Remember the vertex point is always that point that is hk. So here's our general form for a, a, a parabola in vertex form, and we know h is the x-coordinate of our vertex and k is the y-coordinate. So if I'm thinking about if I have plus 3, that means that my h value is actually the opposite of that. Remember, it's always the opposite of those values because it's minus h. So it's going to be negative 3. And the, the k value, since it's negative 1 here, is going to be 1. So the center, or the, excuse me, the vertex, is hk, or negative 3, 1. Okay? The focus is going to be h, and then k plus 1 over 4a. So h is the x value, so that's going to be at negative 3. And then k plus 1 over 4a, which would be 1, which is k, plus 1 over 4a, well, if a is, in this case, this negative 3, so it would be plus negative 1 12, 4 times negative 3, okay? And then we want to simplify that to negative 3, and um, that would be um, 11 twelfths. So that would represent the focus point. And then finally, to find the directrix, we're going to do y equals k minus 1 over 4a. Well, we know um, 1 over 4a is negative 1 12th. So if I'm going to do y equals 1 minus a negative 1 12th or plus 1 12th, okay, that means y would be equal to 13 twelfths, or 1 and 1 12th. So that would represent the directrix.